Editing can be the most time consuming part of creating videos, but after 11 years in the editing trenches, I've discovered how to streamline my workflow without sacrificing quality. So in this video, I'll walk you through eight powerful editing tips that will help you work faster, even if you're just starting out. You gotta just press record. Hey, welcome back to Think Media, Nate here. Now, the first step in editing a video is editing your A-roll or your talking head video. And this can be the most tedious and most time consuming part of your editing process. But over the years, there have been some great editing tools that help you speed up this process. And one of my favorites is today's sponsor, Gling. And what Gling allows you to do is upload your A-roll directly to Gling and it's automatically going to remove your silences and bad takes. This tool saves you hours of having to manually listen through and cut out all your bad takes. This just gives you a nice rough cut with a click of a button. And honestly, I've used Gling for every single video that I've edited over the past two years. Tally that off and man, I've saved days of my life thanks to this tool. Once your video is done processing, you can even edit your video like a Word document, which is so nice compared to having to re-listen to your video over and over again. And once you're finished, you can export your video as an MP4, or you can even throw it over to your editor like DaVinci Resolve and still have all your edits there, which you can then fine tune. Honestly, Gling has been the tool that has saved me hours on each video that I make. So if you wanna get started for free, check out the link in the description down below. So now that we have a rough cut of our video, we wanna think about placing B-roll. Now, a lot of beginners make the mistake of finding and placing B-roll too soon. For example, if we're using a stock footage website, they'll tend to go to the website, download a clip, edit a little bit, go back to the website, download, and that constant process really does take up a lot of time. So instead, I've learned to listen through my entire A-roll first and take notes of different shots that I need. And by the time I finish listening to my rough cut, I already have a list of all the footage that I need for this video. I can then use that as a shot list and go shoot that footage, or I can go to a stock website and download them one by one. So this entire process not only keeps my project nice and organized, but also prevents me from overshooting B-roll. I'm not grabbing random shots that won't make the final cut, which makes the decision process a lot easier. And then I avoid over editing. So it's a win on win. Which brings me to my next tip. If you constantly find yourself looking for the same music, sound effects, or graphics, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time doing so. So one thing you can start implementing today is creating an assets library. Create folders for your favorite music, sound effects, overlays, LUTs. Have that all nice and organized into one folder that you keep on your computer. And anytime you start a new project, you can just bring that folder into your editor and have all your assets in one place. And combine this with the next tip, if you use DaVinci Resolve, you can actually save this folder as a power bin and you'll be able to access all your different assets no matter which project you are in. I use power bins to save all my text in lower thirds, my little zoom in animations, and even some of my favorite music that I use regularly. And some of these tips may seem like little things, but they do add up over the course of editing your video and over the course of multiple videos. And by saving time by not doing the tedious stuff allows you to be more creative with your edit. And I think that is a better win for everyone. And so now that you've organized your project, you can also organize your timeline by color coding clips. This is one of the first things I'll do after editing my A-roll. So for example, this video, I have eight tips, right? So I'll go through and color code each tip as their own section. And by doing so, this allows me to instantly recognize which part of the video I am in. And so when I'm placing B-roll or music, it makes the whole process much more seamless. And there are many different ways you can color code your project. For example, if you edit podcasts, perhaps you have your guests color coded one way and then your clip edited another way. And that gives you a clearer picture of what's going on. And as you're applying a different effects, it just helps you keep on track. Moving on to my next tip, which is going to be a real game changer if you're not doing this already. And chances are, if you're starting out, the way you would perform a cut in your editor is you have to reach over to the blade tool, click that, reach to the part of the video you want to make a cut, press that, and then you have to delete that empty gap. And that admittedly takes a long time and we can really speed this up by utilizing keyboard shortcuts. What this will allow you to do is press a letter on your keyboard and that's going to perform an action. For example, I like to use the ripple delete function to describe what I was just doing. So for example, I could press the letter Q and I'll trim everything up to the beginning I could also press the W button if I just wanna make a simple cut. 
And then I also have the E button that will trim everything at the end. And if you tailor your keyboard shortcuts like I have, it really just becomes muscle memory and you're able just to edit a lot faster. A few extra keyboard shortcuts that I will share with you is if you want to color code your timeline, I've actually set up my number pad to be all these different colors. For example, after I highlighted a clip, all I had to do is press the six on the keyboard and that's going to turn that color pink. And if you're looking to play your video back quickly, you can just double press the L button to watch your video in 2X speed. And similarly, you can just double click the J key to watch your video in two times reverse. Now, if you're someone who's looking for even more customization when it comes to keyboard shortcuts, then you might wanna consider picking up a mouse with extra control buttons. This mouse in particular is the Logitech MX Master 3, which admittedly has seen better days, but of course I use this for every single video. And going into the Logitech program, it allows you to customize each of these buttons to perform a certain task. So you could have this little thumb wheel to control the scroll. You can have a copy, a paste button, or even this button up here to perform a cut. And this makes the editing experience a little bit more tangible. And again, will help you speed up your editing process. Now this next solution does cost a bit of money if you don't have something laying around already. And that is to utilize a big monitor. If you're editing off a laptop, that is totally fine. But as you get more familiar with editing, you're bringing up a lot of different tools and things can begin to feel cramped. So by using a bigger monitor or even a spare TV lying around, plugging that into your computer is going to allow you to get much more real estate when it comes to editing. You can preview your final image much bigger. You can have a huge timeline and you'll be able to edit more precisely. And if you are using a laptop, you can actually use both of your screens at the same time. So you might have your YouTube music playing on one side and then your editor program in the other. And this is really gonna help when it comes to productivity. You're not wasting your time by opening up different windows, closing them, moving them around. So it's definitely a help if you can afford to get a bigger monitor. For editing, I recommend getting a monitor that's around 27 to 32 inches. The monitor that I'm using right now is actually an LG OLED TV, and this thing is a monstrous 42 inches. But I absolutely love it when it comes to editing because I can see my entire timeline just right in front of me. I even have room to put up another window on the same screen. And this is also going to reduce the constant zooming in that you might have to do if you are using a smaller screen. So by just incorporating a few of these tips into your workflow, you're going to speed up your productivity. But I wanna hear from you. Is there an editing tip that you have that is not covered in this video? Leave a comment down below so we can all learn together. If you wanna learn how to prep and film your videos even faster, then be sure to check out this video right here.